Welcome to another episode of Real Estate Investing Explained. Here's today's question. Through your years of experience and working with new investors, what have you found to be the most overlooked part of real estate investing? Mindset. From that standpoint is, and this is just my personal experience, that it's 95% mindset and then the remaining is 5%. So entrepreneurship is not easy by any means. I know on Instagram, Facebook, it's a lot glamorous as people make it out to be. It's not, I mean, just me personally and other entrepreneurs I've spoken with is not what that is. It's a lot of things that you have to do that you don't want to do to get to where you're going. Uh, Of course, you can, once you start to build things, you can put people in place. But I believe that's the the main thing that I believe people don't have a grasp on because there's limiting beliefs that even still to this day that I have, but I believe that for the longest time, I thought, I always thought for some reason that only investing in real estate were for the top wealthy. And that was one limiting belief that I shattered at the age of 23 years old when I bought my first deal. And another limiting belief is that you have to have a large amount of capital or you have to use your own money. So I believe a lot of it's just mindset is the the biggest thing. I actually had that exact same limiting belief. I was always a stock investor my growing up because I I didn't think I could invest in real estate. I thought it was a rich person's game. I thought you had to have a ton of money for it. I never thought that that was possible for me. I always said, yeah, I'll get into real estate once my stock investing, you know, takes off and I have all kinds of money, then I'll dump it into real estate, but ultimately I ended up learning that was just a limiting belief and I bought my first property at 21. So, yeah, I mean, it's definitely just a limiting belief and Actually, I bought my first property before I walked at my college graduation. So how have you seen people get over that and get into the right mindset? I just got a cold chill thinking about that because it's, it's very difficult because limiting beliefs are blind spots. You don't actually know at times that it is a limiting belief. So I believe through reading books, audiobooks, attending boot camps, conferences, and learning from others who have built their business One thing I never understood, and this is another limiting belief that I just recently shattered for myself and replaced, was the value of time. I never realized, and using money, using capital to gain more time. So I'll give you a prime example is, uh, and this is an example I hope many people can relate to is, I was at King's Island. This was with my little, because I'm with big brothers, big sisters. And the, the cost to have a fast pass was, I believe it was $30 more for the ticket. So I got a fast pass for me and then also my, my little. And through that is we would stand in line for 10 to 15 minutes. And then there were lines where people had to wait two hours that were completely full. But I'm just going, talking through that with people that the value of money to save yourself time. And that goes with why if someone's looking to build their business, why are they mowing their lawn? Or why one thing I do now is I outsource my, my laundry and also my grocery shopping. Those are things myself I don't enjoy, but I can buy time and be able to focus on things that are more higher value. But that was a limiting belief that I had too, was the value of time and how important it is and how you can buy some additionally. And that's hiring employees and all that. The tough part about that is you see the dollars coming out because you're paying for it. But when you do it yourself, you're losing net, you're actually losing more. But because you're not actually seeing it leave your bank account, it doesn't register psychologically. So I think that's hard to get over. It's a mindset though. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, it, it's great that you at your age are already have that thought in mind because many people don't even get to that at a, a later stage. I agree. I think mindset is such a hard thing. Over on my other show, Millennial Investing, I had PhD psychologist Daniel Crosby on, and he told us that he still hires someone to manage his money. And this is a guy who has studied the relationship between human psychology and money and investing for more than a decade, yet he still hires someone to manage his money for him because it's just so hard to manage your own emotions. And one of the things you can do that can help get over some of those limiting beliefs you have is to follow people that are very transparent. And what I mean by that is don't follow people that only post their fancy cars or houses or watches. Now, I don't think there's anything wrong with people showing off those items since they've earned them. But when you're trying to overcome your own limiting beliefs, 
These aren't necessarily the people you want to follow on a day-to-day basis. They certainly can provide inspiration, but at least for me, it made me feel like I could never do what they were doing. I always thought that they had some better skill set, or they came from a different background, or they had some edge that I didn't have. But once I started following people that were more transparent and showed their wins and losses, and really how they were getting where they are and how they're doing what they're doing, it made it a lot more clear to me that I could do this too, and that they were no different than me. Once I was able to see that, it made it a lot easier to overcome those limiting beliefs because if they could do it, I knew I could do it too. That's been really helpful for me and really helped me when I was just getting started. So I think it could really help investors that are just getting started now overcome their own limiting beliefs. Yeah. And that's why it's good to go to these conferences or maybe if someone like myself is, and I'm not perfect by any means, and uh, it's one thing I want to mention in that. Uh, if I host a meetup or someone that's local to you that you wish to emulate, go there and see. And, and this was one thing that really helped me through attending these. It's like, that person could do that. How can I not do that? People don't think about it enough. I really don't think people put enough thought into who they're following on social media and how it impacts their mindset. And I know from personal experience because that was me not that long ago. And as I mentioned before, this was super important for me. So I think if people put more focus on it themselves, it could really help. That's all for this episode of Real Estate Investing Explained. Be sure to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, or subscribe to our YouTube channel to get even more free content.